Hello, welcome back to another session of the virtual battery exhibition. Sitting here with Mr. Sedlmeier from FNS Bondec. He's going to tell you a little bit more about the topic manufacturing battery modules by wire bonding. Small, start small and think big. So you can ask questions at any time through the window and um, chat or questions. I'm going to forward the questions afterwards to Mr. Sedlmeier directly and he's going to answer it in the short Q&A session after the presentation. Also, this presentation will be recorded, this whole session, and you're going to find it afterwards in your own dashboard under the point records and also at the booth of FNS Bondec. Now I give the word to Mr. Sedlmeier. The stage is yours. Thank you, Michelle, and welcome to a short session on uh, our topic, Manufacturing Battery Modules by Wire Bonding, How to Start Small and Think Big. Uh, just a very brief overview of uh, what do we do and who are we, what can we do for you in terms of equipment, and also what can we do for you in terms of services. Uh, well, FNS Bontec is uh, a not too large Austrian company with about 40 employees and about 40 years of wire bonding experience. We are located in Austria. This is not quite the view out of the office window, but we are about half an hour away from Salzburg so, and about an hour away from Munich, so it's quite a pleasant area to be in. Uh, this is the company, uh, roughly, this is not all 40 people, but we're about 40. Um, and uh, the guy with the red tie in the middle is uh, the boss, as looks a little bit obvious. Okay, what do we do? Well, we're dealing with Battery modules. Uh, battery modules are very often made up of small cylindrical cells of the type 18650 or 21700. Uh, these cells obviously have to be connected somehow. And we make the equipment to do that. Okay, let's look at a, a typical battery module of 40 cells. In this case, this is a little larger than would be used, let's say, in an e-bike but could be used for larger power uh, tools or something like that. Um, you can see already a number of wire connections uh, on the top of this module to get the, uh, the current distributed and connected uh, from cell to cell. Uh, the way we propose to do this obviously would be wire bonding because this is what the, the equipment does that we manufacture. And I hope this is now uh, visible as a movie. Uh, you can already see that the wire bonder makes connections. Uh, first bond draws a wire out to a second bond and cuts the wire off. This is running a loop now, so obviously you only see a few wires being made. It looks a little bit like a sewing machine and it has a number of the advantages of just that. Here we have an aluminum wire of about 400 microns thickness that is being connected to the cell tops. Um, the biggest advantage of wire bonding really is it's a very, very flexible system, a very flexible uh, technology. You do not need any specialized connectors between the different battery cells. You just need a wire or also a ribbon um, made of aluminum, could also be copper. Um, if you change anything in the size and the module type, or if the design changes a little bit, you don't need any other hardware. All you do is you reprogram the bonder because everything is done in software. We're also very tolerant to variations in height or position of the different cells because we have an image recognition system, pattern recognition system that finds the uh, exact positions of a part and corrects the bonding program accordingly. Here we have, for instance, a, a variety of bond where we chain several cells together. And as you can also see, we're running at roughly one to two seconds per wire. We can run a little faster than that, but here, just to show, you can also see that we're running uh, several wires in parallel. Um, and whenever you're done with the connection, we just cut off the wire at the end of this. So it's quite a flexible technology. In fact, you can do a few more things. You can do the bond for the minus pole, which is the cell rim, also on the top side which gives you a number of advantages in terms of geometry. You do not need to flip the cell uh, module around. The battery module does not need to be flipped around to bond the backside. You can do everything from the front side, which has two advantages. One is that the entire module builds a little lower. 
Secondly, the entire rest of the cell body, so everything below, is free and available for cooling or thermal management or whatever. So if you look at a cell module like this, you can see um, here we have a connection that goes from the rim, from the minus pole of the cell to the plus pole of the next one. And this is due to or what makes it possible is the fact that we can find exactly the position because of our pattern recognition system where the cell uh, connection has to go, even if the part moves slightly from uh, module to module. So we can correct for all that quite easily. Here you can see a little bit closer up uh, what we're doing from the minus pole to the plus pole. That's not all. We can do a few more things. Um, we can also bond to a bus bar that's outside the module, so from cell, not only to cell, but also to another connector. Uh, we could also tie in a battery management system. That's also quite straightforward. Um, and you can see that being done here. So we have an outside brace, uh, a little bit like uh, uh, just a, a current uh, connector. This could be made of aluminum, this could be also made of steel. So it's all very easy. You could also have all the connections to uh, a rail, a common rail like that. In this case, it's a slightly larger battery module. This is all extremely straightforward. One nice thing about wire bonding is also that it is technically a very, very good connection. Uh, it also has extremely high yield, it usually has 100% yield because it is really an old technology um, that was invented for the semiconductor industry. And it is the standard connection technology for uh, semiconductor chips. So you probably have hundreds of wire bonders in daily of wire bonds in daily use already in every electronic device that we carry around, especially in your car. Literally billions, that's American billions, so thousands of millions of wire bonds are made every day worldwide. And one of the nice things is that you have no microstructural change due to heat effects because there is no melting phase in the whole wire bond. So in laser welding or resistance welding, we do have um, molten phases, which you do not have in wire bonding because it is a friction welding process. We also have a bulk joint, so there is no, um, no interface between two different materials where air or corrosion could get in, like in a screw terminal. It really is a corrosion proof bulk joint, and it is even repairable in case one of the bonds doesn't stick the first time around for whatever reason. It could be repaired. That's quite impossible to do with another standard welding process. So it's not really surprising that for EV vehicles, wire bonding has pretty much become the most popular connection technology. In fact, all of the Tesla batteries uh, are made, and that's really made it. Uh, that's really been the reason why wire bonding has become such an incredibly popular connection. It is relatively fast, uh, and it's also relatively cheap. Um, in all, you would count to uh, have about um, 0 0.1, 0 0.01 euros or one euro cent per wire connection depending, of course, on the volume that you run. There's also a question, of course, about the bonding quality. How do you measure the quality? Where well, there's a range of standard methods that's available. One is called a pool test, another one is called a shear test. What's interesting and what's unique for our equipment is that our equipment can, do, can be configured to do both the bonding and the testing. That's really a major advantage. It can even be done fully automated, and we have uh, a few patents on this. Um, just to show you, a typical pull test is this. We have a hook that reaches under the wire loop and pulls up until the wire breaks, ideally, or if the bond is not so good, until the bond itself comes off. Uh, typically, uh, the, the wire breaks somewhere in the middle, and that's what we like to have. Uh, the other version of the test, as I mentioned, is the shear test. There we have uh, a chisel that comes from the side and pushes the wire away. Here we test the bond directly. All of these are standard methods used generally in, uh, in the wire bonding technology, so we're just adapting these for battery use. What you get out of this is a quality control report chart automatically, one of the formats you see here. You can have a chart uh, format like um, where you see the trend of the parts. We also get, of course, a distribution here, like a histogram or a Gauss distribution. 
you get automatically calculated CPK values and other quality parameters. So that's also very straightforward. And of course, you could have a customized report with your company logo on here. So not only your own quality control department, but also the um, audits for customers are happy. There's some even some more that only we have, which is a novel reliability test. You want to know not only how good the bond is, but also how long it will live. And for that, uh, normally you would be running a power cycle test, but we have a shortcut from that developed with the Technical University of Vienna, and I won't go into that anymore, but we have more details at our booth available. All of this can be done on our smallest machine, and this is what we could do for you in terms of equipment. Here is a small desktop machine with a working area of about four inch by four inch, which is still fully programmable for automatic operation. And here, the interesting thing is it has exchangeable heads for bonding and testing, and even the new band heat test. All of these can be switched by the user. If your volumes go up, we also have another machine, which is larger, can run pretty huge battery modules or a number of smaller ones. Again, it has exchangeable bond for test heads. Again, it has the same reliability test possibility. And if you have the smaller machine already, you can upgrade to the larger machine without any change in software. So the training is already done for your, uh, for your operators. Uh, here is the uh, working area seen from the front. So on, 100, on 720 millimeters, you can do quite a bit of work. Uh, you could put in several smaller modules, larger modules. You could even do later automation. You can do automatic parts feeding by some kind of conveyor belt or also by a robot that puts parts in and gets them out again. What is really nice is that the automation does not have to be uh, built in at the beginning. You can do this anytime later on, even at your own site. Uh, the machine can be retrofitted. And if anything needs to be customized for a particular type of modules, that's absolutely no problem. That's not all we can do for you because you may have a, a very small uh, set, up, uh, set out as beginning. So we can help you jumpstart by not giving you the hardware directly, but we can also provide the, the, the hardware in our place. Services such as from the very beginning, it could be feasibility studies. Later on, it could be prototype manufacturing. It could also be contract manufacturing for smaller volumes or help you with wrap up for larger volumes. You can even do uh, additional production or pre-production steps such as pre-cleaning by CO2 snow uh, to help uh, make sure that the surfaces are absolutely clean for wire bonding if that's needed. Anyway, there is a large variety of things we can do for you and we are pretty much ready when you are. So thank you very much for listening and please come back to our virtual booth uh, or talk to us directly. We're happy to help you with anything. Thank you very much.